Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, Borto anime episode review. This one's going to be for episode 4, which is called An Injutsu Battle of the Sexes. So yeah, this is our first, I suppose, uh, in any way Sarada focused episode and I thought it was pretty good. You know, obviously by the end it wasn't necessarily a insight into Sarada as a character. But it was definitely still an enjoyable episode. I think a lot of people are definitely getting behind Borto as a show because it's it's just kind of taking its time to kind of introduce us to the characters first. Uh, they're giving you interesting mysteries there in the background, little interesting interactions, kind of characters who are kind of forming groups. Um, but they haven't really just focused on a plot just yet. And I think people actually are, are kind of appreciating that, that they're gradually, the plot is kind of gradually coming into play. Um, and we get these little things like, oh, there's there's some sort of a, like monster that's kind of affecting people, and potentially we get a look at it here with the animal that Borto summons. But we'll we'll get to that. the The plot of this episode is basically that uh, after all these arguments, uh, the boys in the class and the girls in the class, a kind of rift forms between all of them. That the boys are accusing the girls of this, the girls are accusing the boys of that. And it's kind of like Borto as the main guy, Sarada as the main girl, are really kind of clashing heads. And they're about to kind of more or less fight it out there and then. So Shino steps in and basically because of something that Konohamaru said earlier on that like your generation was one of the best because there were so many rivalries that really spurred everyone on. So Shino to kind of start these rivalries in a way actually is like okay. They're arguing with each other. Let's actually have a competition, boys versus girls. Uh, and they do a kind of capture the flag race between the boys and girls. And that's the kind of key action beat of this episode. As you have, you know, the, the, the guys like doing stuff to slow down the girls. The girls getting ahead of the guys and kind of slowing things down as well. Um, and it, you get some fun interactions. Iwabe using his um, weapon that can do Earth style. Uh, Chocho showing her expansion jutsu, I think for the first time that we've seen it in this series. Um, you, you see little things like some of the more side characters, like there's a girl who seems to be obsessed with explosive tags, um, and kind of Denki gets to unlock some of the electronic locks on the doors, showing that he can use that hacking sort of thing. Uh, but in the end, the kind of core of the episode comes down to Borto, they were just doing summoning jutsu lessons, uh, primarily first with um, ninja tools, but they got the example also that you can summon animals, and Borto really wanted to do that. But uh, they obviously had the reveal that you actually have to have a summoning contract with an animal. And over the course of the episode, Borto doesn't ever seem to sign a contract with any animal. So when he does the thing and actually like uses blood, um, it's not <clears throat> clear like if he knew what he was summoning at all, just that he used blood and basically I suppose opened up the like the summoning portal somewhere and something came out, which was it was a snake, but like the way they animated and showed it, it wasn't entirely sure because we never just saw the full like snake on its own. It almost seemed like it could have been like attached to the weird line looking thing that was kind of almost staying in the portal in darkness. Um, so I don't know if like they're, if this is meant to be like this is the villain of this arc, this is the thing that like affected Metal Lee in the last episode, this is the thing that affected Denki in the first episode, or or what, and it just has a, a connection somehow to Borto with the Ten Saigon potentially thing, who really knows, but given that we end the episode with Mitsuki making, making his debut, um, just showing that he's there, he hasn't actually interacted with anyone yet, that's going to be interesting to see, obviously, because he is uh, Orochimaru's son. Um, if he has anything to do with the fact that this snake was summoned, or, or what? Is this just one of Orochimaru's experiments gone awry, and he's making his debut as like a transfer student now, or what? Uh, I suppose that's the kind of question here. Like, Is this first arc, the villain here, actually something really notable? Or is it in the end going to be quite a small conflict for our you know our group here in Borto to actually tackle and um, it seems like it's going to have some plot impact because of the fact that Borto seems to be the only one to able to like see the kind of evil aura that it's giving off 
but uh, we'll obviously have to wait and see. There's, there seems to be something with uh, Borto and Mitsuki for next episode that uh, they're making it to be quite important. But um, anyway, the the in the in the action stuff, Borto summons this snake. It kind of goes out of control and sends Chocho flying basically off the roof of the school. Um, and the the key thing that I suppose brings the conflict between the girls and boys to an end is that if Borto had just left it. The snake would have distracted the girls enough, potentially hurt them enough, that the boys could have easily won and got the flag. But instead, what Borto does is he actually jumps out after um, Chocho to save her. So he, gra he grabs Chocho, uh, so some of the other girls grab Borto, and then Shikadai and Inojin grab them. So the boys and girls work together to save Chocho, and in the background, uh, the class rep, who I th whose name is uh, Sumire, I think, though I don't think they've said her name yet, um, she grabs the flag. So the girls technically win, but they in the end say that, okay, Borto, because you went out of your way, surprised us, saved uh, Chocho like that, we'll let you away with it for now. This conflict where, like, the winner had to listen, uh, the winner had to be listened to by the uh, other side. We'll let you away with it for now, and there seems to be a better camaraderie between the group now. Um, as well as setting up a little bit of a rivalry between some of the characters um, that will, I suppose, spur them on to be better going forward. Um, so that that was nice. Um, I, I think the standout characters in this episode, uh, surprisingly, uh, Konohamaru, I really liked how they portrayed him in this episode, um, in that he seems to just be the really, really skilled kind of hotshot ninja in the village, kind of like the Kakashi of this series, almost. But uh, someone that they can make a little bit more fun of because of Konohamaru's character. But, you know, really referencing that, like, he's the third Hokage's grandson. Look at this, uh, you know, toad frog he can summon. Um, which is interesting. People were speculating that maybe he would have the monkey, like uh, Saratobi. But he has the, the toads, like uh, Naruto and Jiraiya. Which I, I, I think fits. And I suppose asks the question, like... Um, if indeed our new trio of uh, Mitsuki, Sarada, and Borto are going to all have summoning animals, who's going to have what? This episode seemed to make it somewhat apparent that um, uh, Borto's going to have a snake, which means that, okay, are you going to go down the road with Sarada of having her get one of the slugs for the healing, or are you going to give her the toads because she's the one who actually looks up to Naruto a lot and kind of wants to be Hokage and that's that's the more side that kind of they use the toads to associate with that and then that would maybe leave like uh, surprisingly Mitsuki for the, the slugs or will they introduce a new animal and not kind of have it always be the you know the tree the three animals exactly but still a uh, really really solid episode for sure that um, you know, they, they still didn't properly define, I think, Sarada and Borto's relationship. They again brought up the whole idea of, like, you guys are childhood friends, right? And Borto's just like, yeah, our parents know each other really well, so we kind of know each other. Without fully explaining, like, are, like they do know each other, maybe they just have some issues, they tend to just argue with each other, or is it just that they actually don't know each other all that well? Uh, there's, there's some questions like that that maybe this episode could have gone a little bit more into, just regards to Borto and Sarada's relationship. But there's time. There's tons of time left to still cover that stuff. But uh, yeah, very, very solid episode. And uh, yeah, just going to end the video there. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on the episode, as well as my review. But uh, that's been the video for today. Thanks for watching, and bye.